welcome to the english lecture even though your lectures started the previous week this started on a day where my lectures were in place so this is the first lecture for the year and i and i hope you people are equally glad as i am to be here with all of you of course we did not expect to meet uh, in uh, in this new year in such a condition or in such circumstances but whatever it is it's uh, way better there are a lot of other things that are happening around thanks to our online sessions thanks to all the people at the end tutorials who worked really hard to make this happen all right i request all of you to to not chat anymore and just focus on what i'm saying so guys we're doing something very interesting but uh, you know if i if someone asks me what is life according to you so first of all there is no specific definition of life it differs from person to person it differs on the basis of the perception the person has towards life it depends on the experiences the person has had in his or his or her life so it's really different but if i have to describe life in uh, in short i usually refer to this song from mr india which says zindagi ki yahi reet hai haar ke baad jeet hai thode aansu hain thodi hansi aaj gham hai to kal hai khushi which says the only way life works is you lose first and only then you win you cry first and then you laugh you have difficult times and then you have success that's the only way life works so it is a combination of both and life is like a roller coaster ride where we have our own ups and downs and imagine if life was like a local train there wouldn't have been any entertainment it would have been a straight ride straight to home no excitement no realization of what what is good what is bad and that's how simple it would have been but this roller coaster ride makes life one of the most beautiful journeys that a person can have so today we're doing a poem from your ninth standard textbook it's called life i'll be putting on the the text here for all of you so that even if you don't have a textbook it should not bother so here it is life just a moment all right so students i request all of you to have your pens and pencils ready and write the meanings of the important words that i mentioned here and uh, we shall begin life believe is not a dream so dark as sages say of the little morning rain foretells a pleasant day sometimes there are clouds of gloom but these are transient all if the shower will make the roses bloom oh why lament its fall so the first stanza we'll write the meanings of the important words over here first and then we'll see the explanation i want you all to write to understand the word sages s a g e s second line of the first and the sages sages are wise men w i s e wise m e n men wise men samajhdar log the meaning of the word oft in the third line o f t oft means often o f t e n it means often or usually often or usually the next word is foretells which means predicts p r e d i c t s predicts p r e d i c t s then i wanted to underline the word gloom g l o o m it means sadness gloom means sadness the next word transient the meaning is already given there in the textbook but because you cannot see it here i give it to you 
Yeah, you can see it now. It's on the right hand side. Transient means temporary. Temporary. And the last word of the stanza is lament. The fourth under the eighth line, lament. Lament means to complain. I, uh, even even that is present in the textbook. All right. So what do you mean by this entire stanza? Is what we'll see. So usually, the way people describe life, ex especially the wise men, the wise people, sometimes the way they describe it, it looks like what they're saying is life is like a dark dream. Life is something to be really scared of. Life is not that great a journey. Life is really bad. Life is pessimistic. So the first line tells us that do not believe a lot of wise men when they say that it is a dark dream. Okay, life is not that bad. Life is not that bad. Life is not that difficult. Life is not that dharavna. It's not that people say it. It's all about your own personal perception. Okay, it's all about your own personal opinion, and everyone can have their own opinions. So the first two lines are very simple, where the poetess Charlotte Bront is is asking us to not believe a lot of dark, a lot of sages, a lot of wise men, who state that life is a dark dream. And then the example that she gives here is beautiful. She says, often after a little morning rain, we can predict a pleasant day. And that's why now that it is summers and we feel the heat in the mornings and throughout the day, I'm sure by the end of May, we will, we will all lose our patience towards the heat in the summer and we would all be longing for, for rains. And uh, sometimes it may, it will happen that during the summers itself, because of a lot of heat that will be generated, in the mornings we might see that there are some shards. And you know, those few hours of shower can actually predict that the entire day is going to be really pleasant. And I'm sure you know the signs behind it. When the land is the land it absorbs the water. And that's how the land becomes less hot. And that's how you can predict that the day is going to be a pleasant one. Pleasant is a cheerful one. Sometimes there are clouds of gloom. Clouds of gloom. I wanted to write, you've already written uh, the meaning for, for gloom, that is sadness. Clouds over here, clouds of gloom together may mean some bad times, bad situations. Okay? So sometimes there are some bad situations that we go through in our lives. But these situations are temporary. These are transient these clouds of lumatory, whenever we see those clouds in the sky, it's, it's clear that it's going to rain now. But does, does that gray cloud stay up there in the sky forever? Not at all. All right. It is temporary. As the wind keeps pushing it away, soon it goes away and you can see the sun shining bright once again. Okay. So here the clouds of gloom are the sad days. All right. And these these clouds of gloom teach us a lot of things in life. So these clouds of gloom are temporary. If the shower will make the roses bloom, oh, why lament its fall? And even though these shower, the showers are not allowing us to go out of the, whole, out, out, out of the house or uh, they're creating some difficulties for us, but these are the same rains or showers that actually bloom the roses around us, that actually bloom uh, a lot of plants and trees around us. It spreads greenery. It looks beautiful. So when the same shower of rain can make the roses bloom and look beautiful, then why do we complain about it? Why do we lament? Lament is complain. And we human beings are known for this. We are unhappy with every single thing in this nature. When it's summers, we hate summers. We want monsoon to arrive. When it starts raining, we start complaining about rains. Because floods ho jate hain, kichad ho jata hai, the land becomes marshy, and you have to wear a raincoat all the time. So now you want the rain to go away once again. Once again, then there is winters. We have a we we keep lamenting. Ke yar, bahut thand lag rahi hai, bahut sweater pehna pad raha hai, chahiye. And then when the summers arrive, it's the same cycle. So basically, if you see, we are one of the most ungrateful creatures that God created, and we are never thankful to whatever happens in our lives. So if I have to summarize this one stanza. I would simply like to put it like this. So the speaker of the poem is seeking to pull back the shadow 
from life. She wants to make it clear to the reader, to all of us, that life is not something to be feared of or scared of, or it's not a dark dream. Okay, the third and the fourth lines speak on how something that seems so gloomy and so difficult can actually predict something pleasant and nice. And the little morning rain, okay, which brings, brings forth calm and lovely day. She also gives two additional examples in this stanza. Okay, so the speaker brings up gloomy clouds that cover the sky. And though these may seem, uh, you know, that they would stay forever, they are actually transparent, uh, they're actually temporary, transient, and they do not last forever. The third example in the final two lines of the stanza, as you can see, she asks the question, if rains means that all the roses will bloom, it means that the nature will look even more beautiful than ever. Why do we complain about it? There is no reason to be sad over these elements of nature and of life as they will pass or bring with them something positive. All right. Like today, we are all suffering from a pandemic of coronavirus. Let us tell ourselves that this, this too shall pass. It won't stay forever. The next stanza we go to now. Rapidly, merrily, life's sunny hours flit by. Gratefully, cheerily, enjoy them as they fly. I want you to write the meanings of certain words over here. Rapidly, please write the meaning. Quickly, rapidly, quickly. Rapidly is quickly. Merrily is happily. Merrily is happily. Sunny hours. Please write the meaning. Sunny hours means good or happy times. Sunny hours means good or happy times. Good or happy times. Flit by means fly by or fly away. Flit by is fly by or fly away. Gratefully means thankfully. Gratefully means thankfully. Cheerily is once again happily. Cheerily is once again happily. All right. So the second stanza, in the second stanza, the poetess tells us that these sunny hours, these good and happy moments of life, they fly by rapidly and merrily and happily. So what do we do? Do we cry and regret about that? No. Instead, let us be grateful. That is, let us be thankful. And let us enjoy them happily as they fly. And now let me give you a very good example for this. Usually, whenever we go for a picnic somewhere and, uh, or maybe for a vacation, if the vacation is going to last for 10 days, the first day is, is pretty, you know, okay. Because you know that, you know, it has just started and uh, we still have 10 days to enjoy and, you know, stuff like that. But as days go, go by and you approach the last day of the vacation, you suddenly look back at your vacation and you and you start feeling yeah, time kitna jaldi chala gaya hai, samaj mein nahi aaya. so is it like ke time apne se speed badalta hai? no the pace of the time is the same it's just that when we are really happy we don't have time to to observe its speed or how fast is it going by so that's why we feel that good times and happy times they flit by quickly and instead of lamenting and instead of complaining or regretting the poet advises us, the poetess advises us to enjoy those times and those moments as they fly and be thankful to nature for the same. To summarize this stanza, I would say the second stanza of this piece is written much more lyrically. The words are almost asking to be sung. One can imagine someone dancing, spinning in a circle as they celebrate these phrases. The speaker says, life will rapidly and merely fly by. The hours will pass without notice until suddenly they are gone. The speaker is promoting a way of living in which one should appreciate and enjoy each hour that passes and not complain. The next stanza. What though death at times steps in and calls our best away? What though sorrow seems to win over hope a heavy sway? Yet hope again elastic springs unconquered though she fell. Still buoyant are her golden wings, still strong to bear us well. Manfully, fearlessly, the day of trial bear, for gloriously, victoriously, can courage quell despair. 
I want you to write the meanings first. Please take down the meanings. The first line of the stanza, the, uh, the phrase steps in. The meaning of the phrase steps in means arrive, A-R-R-I-V-E. Steps in means to arrive. Then O apostrophe E-R is over, O-V-E-R, over. It's over. Sway means control. It's, it's given over here rather on the right hand side. Sway means controlling influence to control something. I wanted to underline the phrase elastic springs, which means come back. Elastic springs, which means come back. The next line, unconquered, means undefeated. Unconquered is undefeated. Unconquered is undefeated. The next line is buoyant. The meaning of the buoyant is already given here. It says something that can rise upwards. Something that can rise upwards, so we won't write that. We go to the next word, that is Bear, B-E-A-R, bear. Bear means to hold. Bear means to hold. The next line, manfully is strongly. Manfully is strongly. Fearlessly is bravely. Fearlessly, bravely. The, the phrase in the next line, the day of travel, the trial, the day of trial means difficulties, difficulties, difficulties. And the word bear beside it, it, it has a different meaning here. It means tolerates, bear tolerates. And the last line, the word quell, quell, the meaning is given. End or defeat. End or defeat. Harana. Defeat. And the last word despair is sadness. Despair is sadness. All right. So the last stanza says, What though death at times steps in and calls our best away? We all know the fact. Every, everything that has come to life on this planet will have to die and leave it someday. And the most painful time in a person's life is when death steps in and takes someone who is really close to us, our beloved people away from us. And that sorrow is irrevocable, that sorrow is irreplaceable or unhealable. Usko hum heal nahi kar sakte ta easily. But that's life and life has to go on. So this line is interrogation. Interrogation is a question that the poet is asking us, the readers. What do sorrow sim seems to win? Sorrow is sadness seems to win over hope a heavy sway. Kya hoga agar sorrow, agar dukh, agar burai, umid ke upar heavy ho jati hai toh? Kya ye sahi hoga? Will it be good if sorrow seems to win over hope? Umid ke upar dukh ka jeet ho raha hai. Kya ye sahi hoga? Nahi. Yet hope, again, elastic springs. That's how our life is. Life teaches us. Life self-heals. Khudi humko thik karta hai vakt. Okay? And our hope springs like an elastic again. Our hope comes back. Wo fir se aajati hai. And this hope has a lot of qualities here. Okay? The hope is unconquered. It's undefeated. You cannot defeat hope. Nor, nor can sorrow defeat hope. Nor can death defeat hope. Nothing can defeat hope. Though she fell, even though hope fell down for some time, her buoyant golden wings. Buoyant, I already gave the meaning, it's there. 
something that can rise upwards her boy and her strong golden wings can still bear us well can still hold us well the hope which has fallen is so strong that it can fly up once again and her golden wings are so strong that it can make us sit over it and help us fly up once again in the sky to heights of happiness and these wings are manful manful i give you the meaning strong fearless brave and when the day of trial bears and it is brave and strong throughout the difficult situations of life and it can tolerate our weight throughout all these difficulties okay that's how life is it gives us so many things for gloriously gloriously means beautifully gloriously means beautifully victoriously is triumphantly the, the spelling is t r i t r i u m p h a n t l y triumphantly gloriously and triumphantly beautifully and triumphantly can courage quell despair courage has the power to quell to quell as into defeat despair that is sadness so the last stanza can be summarized in this way so if you observe this is the longest stanza of the poem and it conquers the more difficult part of life that is death the first two complete sentences of this stanza are questions in which speaker is asking us so what if death you know death at times comes in so what if sorrow seems to win these things are temporary the speaker is acknowledging that these things exist but she is not allowing them to control her ye cheez exist karega bura exist karega but wo hamare pe control nahi kar sakta hai the la- the fifth line of this stanza is more hopeful she describes hope as having elastic springs even though she fell in sorrow she will bounce back up again in hope her golden wings are still strong and buoyant and will be able to hold us well the character in the poem can be representing the poet herself or perhaps someone she knows quite personally and has depending on for support in the past a mother or a sister figure the last four lines of the poem speak of strength in which the speaker is promoting living fearlessly and manfully which means strongly and bravely like a man would live she concludes that she ends with when one day of trial comes that is you know when one difficult or a challenging day comes it will end itself wo khud hi khatam ho jayega and that is where hope will defeat despair hope will defeat and end all the sadness and no despair can quell the victory one feels when holding on to hope nothing can touch it not even death and that's how students we end the poem uh, i want you to do certain things from the textbook i want you to just see just look at the screen the page page number 4 over here page number 4 english workshop your homework is to do activity number 1 so here as you can see you are supposed to find the two lines that show optimistic attitude and pessimistic so optimistic is positive attitude and pessimistic is negative attitude from the poem i wanted to find out the lines that show positive attitude towards life and negative attitude towards life i wanted to do activity number 2 here you are supposed to give other ly adverbs of similar similar meanings to the following words so for example for rapidly i have given i have i have given the meaning quickly so you have to write meanings that should also end with ly so for example rapidly is quickly merrily is happily right so i've given you two examples you can write these down rapidly is quickly merrily is happily so sim- similarly gratefully also has to have a meaning that will end with ly similarly all the other words should have meanings that end with ly and the, and the third activity where you are supposed to give three examples of interrogation so there are certain things certain sentences in the poem that are actually questions interrogations i wanted to write these three and also give the explanation for the same and the last thing 
I wanted to write the poem appreciation of this poem. I will be sending it to you after the lecture. You can refer to it and write it twice in your notebook, very sincerely, because it's one of the most important things that you will have, and one of the most challenging things that you will have in uh, your English subject this year. All right. So that's it from my end.